Hi, my name is Dave Granville. I'm a trustee with the Southampton History Museum. Very fortunate to be here today cooking with the Countess. I'm at beautiful home of Willie Somme. It's the Port of Missing Men in Southampton, and we're here today. She's going to teach me how to make ratatouille. So let me know what I can do. All right. Um, I put a variety of things here. Every item has to have its own thing, and they, they all go into the uh, oil separately. Okay. And uh, it starts with onion, and uh, onion sort of uh, also leaves a, a good taste behind, and that's why I start to start with the oil. Is yeah. that to keep the flavors separate in each of the vegetables we're going to put in? They all have different cooking time. Oh, okay. That's why you can't throw them together. I mean, some people don't bother, you know, but but I and to me it's important. So, so. Um, First, we can put the onion in. I can get the skin off. And uh, I cut it sort of uh, not very small. Like a rough sort of cut. Like that, and like that, and like that, and then rough, rough. That should be okay. So I'll put that in. Should I start with one of my? I did, I did. Oh, yeah. Your compost. 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 And you can start with yours. Similar size, Willie, really on the chops. Yeah. Uh, the tomatoes probably take up the biggest bowl, so you can the small bowls with those, yeah. And the thin part of it. Is that about good? Uh, it's a little bit too thick. Too thick. Yeah. Like thinner this way? Yeah, thinner. Okay, so it cooks and out. Here, the thin part, yeah. you cut the end off, but you just don't cut it in half. Oh, okay. Because it looks prettier when there's some round things in there too. I got ahead of myself here. Yeah. So that goes in here. This is your compost. So that's compost. zucchini, right? Yeah. Well, that's where we go into the bowl. <laughs> and that's for the yellow one. Okay, for the yellow squash. Mm -hmm. Cut this like little discs about that? Yes, thing. a little thinner. That'll look pretty. Thinner, yeah, okay, that's fine. I, I My knife good. skills aren't quite like yours. So that's, that's, that's enough that, for the That's enough? Yeah, yeah. And that goes into here now. Okay. Continue and, and, on with and, that. And, and you can add some sort of like cut things. The eggplant? From the, from the bigger uh, piece there. They don't have to be slices. They get to be Oh, like big chunks. Stuff. Okay. Like you maybe. Yes. That good? And, um, one more. Yeah, like that. Okay. Uh -huh. So when do you make ratatouille? Is this a summer? With all the summer I, vegetables I like going it in? Preferably when everything is uh, in abundance available in my garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right now uh, it's sort of uh, my son decided we should have no flowers in the garden this year and uh, only because we have to feed the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Good. And uh, the neighborhood, um, they eat. <laughs> <laughs> I so wish I lived in this neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't have as much as I usually have, and since I'm all, all by myself right now, it doesn't matter anymore. So I had to buy these peppers, for example, mm -hmm. and these peppers, they are so hard, I think they breed them for uh, fireproof or something. Yeah, well they probably and travel you, long distances. That too, but I yeah. mean, already they breed them for shelf life or for sour, fireproof or whatever, like Weapons. but you can take one and you can Throw it at your dog, and the dog will be dead. <laughs> you can play polo with these things. Okay. So it's unbelievable. And uh, anyway, so you can cut one of these. Okay. You want the red one or the sure. green one? Sure. I'll go with the red. Go Take the, the seeds out. The seeds out. Right? out. Yes, yes. So what I do? Look, I slice it like this. Okay. And the seeds are deep on the just a long slice like you're doing this? Yeah, and then I, I cut those uh, again. So. I like the red better. 
Yes, good. Flavor wise, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the red is very good. The green ones usually they really have a much thinner skin. I know I know a lot of people have the have they say the green ones give gas. Well, you know this gas thing. Yeah. I explained that before. <laughs> I explained that with the with the uh, when you were cooking your your lentils, lentils yeah. Lentil Everything every fruit has already what helps you digest it or what helps your metabolism to pick it up in the right way and not fight it. And the cooking kills all that. So to eat things raw as much as possible. The ratatouille is cooked very little. Seriously, uh, two minutes. Every, so you still everything. get all the flavor and all the yeah. I guess, nutrients that you're not all cooking the nutrients. out? It's still crunchy. And, and I, that's why I cook everything separately. To, to treat everything the same way because some things need longer cooking. The onion it, probably a little more. The uh, onion like, longer, but, uh, but the yeah. what do you mean? So this I do like this, and what then I, this I cut them again. See? <laughs> what is this called again? Aubergine. Aubergine. Yeah. Eggplant. Eggplant. Yeah. And that probably doesn't take much to cook, no? Uh, not really, no. Because it's soft. It's kind of. Yeah. It means but it, it it really adds good taste. Uh, so I did strips, I'll do little chops about an inch. So we can put the the, the okay, put they can go together. So Is that, a, that enough? Do I do equal amounts or really just to taste? No, oh, that's fine. I mean what we're doing now, we're filling a uh, we're filling a, a casserole this size. Mm -hmm. The one that I made last night is, is uh, six inches. I, I guess smell it's it. eight, eight inch. Okay. So this is an eight inch casserole. And, and um, the tomatoes we do last. Okay, you want some tomatoes here? You want the. Uh, well, just, no, I want to demonstrate how to get the skin off. Okay. And, and this you have to cook. And that has to be set separate. Oh, the yeah. yeah. Same this, size as these, this, pretty this much? One, I'll do it for you. Okay. Yeah. So. How am I doing size wise in these things? We don't have to peel this, right? No, no, no. Be pretty them. Purple. Yeah, that's we'll put a separate bowl again, yeah? Yes. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the skin is yeah. like plastic, and you really don't want to have that in your digestive system because it's indigestible. Sometimes it's waxy too. And it's waxy. Like you buy them and, at the market. And it, it blocks uh, the, the the moving along. Of okay, them. we don't want that. So what I Let's do? Keep things moving. I mean. Uh, if you tell people the skin off, oh my God, and they start peeling and they take an hour to peel, not necessary. And, and if you have no gas, you have to do this with boiling water. But I do it with gas, so I have it sitting on here. Yep. Right? You will wait, you'll hear a pop in a minute. Oh yeah, yeah, because I've heard you can boil it and then peel it off. Yeah, yeah, forget this the is boiling. This goes much quicker. Yep. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So it's like blistered off. Yeah. Off? Now, if you have this all wet, then already much juice goes into the water. And here, this is just perfect. This comes in one swoop. Oh, wow. Thing comes off. Oh. Right? More a new thing. The tomatoes get the biggest part. This is a regular, very regular tomato. Oh, it's still some skin. Here. Yeah, just like on the vine, not an heirloom or. Yes, and those are really the good ones. Let me cut this. I kind of cut them off. And seeds and all go in. No, I don't do anything. I'm going to do that. Just the only thing I take off is this, this hard thing here. Let's go. 
you see in the compost. Okay, so that goes in last, so that's probably the least cooked, so it's... Yeah, exactly. And, and, they, and they also make a lot of juice, yeah. and if you mix too much juice with the oil that you're cooking in, then the oil Sorry. loses efficiency. But, um, uh, okay, now when we have everything cut and neat and everything, then we cut another tomato. Right? Another, another little one? No. Should Let's I take one of the good ones. Then. One of this one. Should I peel it? Up? Just put it on the stove again? Um, let me see. It's pretty ripe. Yeah, I don't know if you should peel it or not. I mean, no. the Italians have these, and they yeah. never have that hard skin. But here, no, I can feel it's soft and squishy. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's oh, yeah, always. Can I skin. chop it like that? It's just yeah, yeah, that's fine. Like yeah, that's good. But just just chop it up. You got this little white bit out. You said that's a tougher part. Yeah. Oh, you're doing a good job. Mm. <laughs> Learn from the best. Yeah. I just chop it up the same small pieces. Yeah, cut it like that. Like these wedges, kind of? Um, yeah, and then cut again. Again, it's, sideways. Yeah. Oh, and can they go together, see. these two different see. tomatoes? Let me see. I'm going to do the bigger glass Keep cutting. A little bit. That's just perfect now. That's All right. Um, now, do we use salt or pepper or do you herbs to uh, season this ratatouille or? Yes. Oh, Garniel. Can you I, I run see. to the garden, please? Yeah, Do you know where it grows, right? I do, in the garden. Just, just <laughs> take one of the big stems. When we're cooking this, huh? in, in um, oil, and this is a deep fryer. Uh-huh. So, uh, I don't like to use What kind of oil? High heat. High heat oil. Is that this, that's... this kind of stays and it drips off. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. A little basket and do fries in. But what's and a high heat oil? Is I that... have this in different sizes. And uh, this is this is the oh, grape seed oil. Yeah, yeah. Oh, grape seed. Okay. High heat cooking. Yeah. I recently was making a, a Caesar salad dressing, mm -hmm. and it called for vegetable oil, which I use. I think I use um, olive oil for just about all my cooking, mm -hmm. but with baking, I think it's better to use the vegetable or yes, I don't right. know if that's high heat, low heat, yeah. but yeah. now I have it in my pantry, so. Yeah, the, the olive oil you cannot use for cooking, maybe you no. shouldn't, because the, 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 the olive oil has such values that the cooking takes it out totally. And the, the value of the, of the olive oil is uh, Virgin, extra mm -hmm. virgin, extra virgin. Oil, is very high oxygen content. I like it on my bread. Well, the oxygen, yeah, I do I? I can. Uh, yeah, I can make a meal of yes. that. But it's very, very difficult to get here. And I buy olive oil here. I have uh, friends that send it to me from really? somewhere in the world. I like Greek olive oil mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, Spanish olive oil. Italian, uh, you know, you know, uh, the motor oil mixing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I shouldn't. I get the big jug, you know, <laughs> from the grocery, so. But what I do when I buy olive oil here, I s hold the bottle against the light, and if it's cloudy, where usually people say, oh, yuck, yeah. they don't want that. That's you want that. That I want yeah. that. There's impurities or maybe bits of the olive still yes, in it. perfect. Yeah. 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 That's what tastes good, yep. and this is, has the benefit of the oxygen, which is essential for your liver, okay. especially people that smoke should as much olive oil as possible, because the oxygen, the liver puts it into the blood, and that puts it into the brain, and you can function 
when you when you smoke smoke too much you start forgetting things uh -huh. you start having delusional thoughts i quit smoking 10 you, years you ago. get depressed because it's all liver malfunction and the liver will come back to health with this very very good olive oil uh, so now uh, some fresh basil fresh basil very nice this is my helper oh, yeah. did you tell him <laughs> and the basil is at the other end of the property. Yeah. We're on about 600 acres here? 1,200 yeah. acres? Uh, <laughs> it used to be, when we still had that, it used to be the lar largest... Um, on all of Long Island. Of yeah. Long Island, yeah. privately owned. Yeah. Non-privately owned is, um, uh, what's the airport Well, thing? that smells good. Oh, MacArthur. No, not MacArthur. The Grumman. Grumman. Grumman are the ma the largest landowners in Long Island. But this was the largest privately owned. And somebody very smartly said, well, the largest is Gardener's Island. Gardener's Island is not Long Island. No, it's Gardener's Island. It's Gardener's <laughs> Island. Give them the name. Yeah. yeah. So now with Lewis and I, we share the biggest. And this part of the property was 1,000 acres. And the other 1,000 acres is what Lewis has now. Beautiful. So all together, the whole property was 2,000 acres. My introduction to the Hamptons was just across the way at Tower Point. Yeah. The end yeah. of Tower Point Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I overlooked this bay, Lewis Bacon's Island, yeah. and okay. you know, all this prop beautiful property that you've preserved. So oh, yeah, it's a wonderful it. introduction to the Hamptons yeah. and that's why I stayed. So this I I, I picked that off. Mm -hmm. And uh, after all this is uh, cooked. Now just at the end, you don't this, cook the we basil. cook we cook first the onions and we can put garlic in there too. And that flavors what follows. Yeah. And then um, I prefer to cook it in a glass in the, the, in the skillet. Now each time you, you start start with the onions and you put them aside and then do the other softer vegetables or you can use the same uh, oil. Keep you the can same keep oil. Keep going yeah. and as the oil evaporates or whatever it does, you can add. Oil. Okay. But this, of course, depends, so all the oil is there already. Okay. But here I, I keep putting it in because this is basically a pain in the neck to yeah. deal with afterwards. Mm -hmm. you know? So this one, it, the oil gets totally uh, used up. And, uh, and, the, and what do you yeah. serve this with? Is this typically a side, or would you put this over pasta? or? Uh, ratatouille goes with anything, with yeah. meat. There's still plenty of meat eaters. So. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's a, a side dish, or I, I mean, I, I, I eat it sort of with a spoon because mm -hmm. I like it so much. But, um, it's, um, anyway, uh, then um, when everything is cooked, it looks sort of like that. Then yeah. Let's see. We use that later for celery. Just as good as so you can. Yeah, that's okay. It, I can it, smell it. It will look like that. When it is like that, already cooked now in oil, um, when it's still very, 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 very hot and everything, I put a good... Uh, Some of the dry basil. Dry basil yeah. in there, because that gives a lot of taste. Mm -hmm. And then I mix this... Uh, it's so fragrant. It. Yeah. And there will also be a lot of juice because you get a lot of juice with this, and and the and cooking draws kind of the juice out of the mm -hmm. the moisture from all of these. Yeah. So I use uh, first it has to be cold water. Um, I put a little uh, cold starch, yeah. just two teaspoons in a in a small cup. Not to add too much, just to put in this one cup, and um, then I, I, I it has to be cold water because if you mix cornstarch with hot, you get lumps. It's like a glue, or yes, yeah, you know. and it gets lumpy. And if you put the cornstarch into the whole mix when it's hot, it will all be lump, lumpy, hot, mm. it lumps right away. But when you mix it, uh. Oh, so you mix it with the cold water and make a little cold water. mixture to go into the saucer? Yeah, I'll take a little cup here. Yeah. 
So if you, let me get a teaspoon yeah. out of here. This is a very, very important cooking trick, uh, especially when you do uh, any kind of cook cooking, when you make soups mm -hmm. or anything that you, you want to... You don't want lumps. Yeah. Oh, you want to... Also, if you, anything, if you want to thicken anything, so two, two like that, which is two teaspoons. This is a little bigger than a teaspoon. Uh, if you put something hot in here, yeah. you, it will get pasty, lovely. And with cold water, we have cold nice consistency. Yeah. It, it, will, it will be like a totally, totally uh, now you see the lumps? Yeah. Let me stir it a bit. It totally dissolves. See, there's no more lumps. Okay, another little cooking tip from the countess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So no it's almost like milk. No, it's no like lumps milk. at all. Yeah. And this will just thicken up what we've done because you said a lot of the that, that has additional. To be. Now, I put some of the juice that comes with cooking all this. Yeah. I put it in just to flavor it a little bit. And then I mix it when it's all like that. You know, it, this has been now already since yesterday. Sitting, yeah. It, it, it is a little bit fresher in color when it's freshly done, obviously. No, it's beautiful with the colors. I mean, these yeah. are the colors are better. And you smell it. Nice mm -hmm. it smells, Yeah, right? since you opened it up. So, uh, this all now fills the bigger, the bigger bowl here. And, and I cook first the onion and then everything else. Yeah. And I like to cook it in the in the pan, and you take any kind of slotted spoon you have. Yeah, and then you preserve all those juices and... And everything stays in there, but the food comes into here. And then uh, one, once all the cooked stuff is in there, then you mix that with it. Like and, it then, and then you bake it, or that's when you serve and it? Then, and then, still, when, when it's all mixed in and everything, then you put these leaves in and mm -hmm. mix, mix them in, and uh, then you have to preheat your oven. Oh, so you do bake it? Yes. After. How long do you bake it for? 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for that, you never cook anything longer than two minutes, and that way it stays still chewable. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not just a mush. Yeah, I get a little crunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it when it's just mush and it looks like a little slop on the plate. Yeah, no, no, I, I like no. this. I can see what's going this in is, there. This is very nice, yeah. The only, the only problem I have with this is that the skin of the peppers of these. Mm -hmm. Can you peel those skins too? The peppers have No, a, the no. whole fruit is, is it's like a cannonball. Mm. <laughs> really? It's unbelievable. Anyway. So basically, uh, basically we're done preparing. Okay. Now we can uh, eat. What are we gonna have it with? A nice little bread. Would oh. you like me to serve? Yeah. I don't know. Connor, Connor will do us the grace. He doesn't like. Uh, Pretty little bowls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bring, bring another bowl, uh, Tanya. And, and bring those little, uh, little kuchen garble. It smells so good. So now, actually, um, since I didn't do, cook this yesterday for consumption, I didn't really put salt and sugar and all these things in that you do to you put your own flavor and character. And I didn't put garlic in because uh, Thank you. because uh, I have my guest is uh, allergic to garlic, so I didn't put garlic in either. So this is I love really garlic. I, I use it in just about everything. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Me too, totally. And salt, pepper. I probably use too much salt, but trying to get better with that. We'll give some to Connor. There's very, very little. Uh, salt. Daniel, you gonna have some? No, right now. Okay. Here's the test. Mmm. Still crunchy. Mm hmm. It's not bad. Mm hmm. I could eat this straight out of the refrigerator. Mm hmm. Well, thank you. Daniel, you should eat some. It's really good. <laughs> 
Now sometimes, before I eat it, I put sort of a dollop of that good olive oil mm -hmm. in. It's not hot anymore, so it won't be damaged, but it will add some taste. Um, the olive oil. That's a good one. <laughs> Fairways. Unfiltered. Yes. Fairways, but the fairways all closed down, right? So that's the ones that I found to have the most. Uh, yeah, a little cloudiness cloudy. to it. Not anymore. And actually. unfiltered, so that's, yeah, that makes sense. So that's a little thicker. I'll try a little splash. Mm -hmm. Would you like one? in Italy I had friends who have a little country home and mm. they make olive oil themselves so I watched how they do it and uh, they press it the first cold pressing mm -hmm. stays in the family oh really the second that's not for sale or available to the public the second cold pressing goes to the village the third cold, cold pressing maybe goes to the nearest town, and the fifth cold pressing, pressing mm -hmm. they add um, what do you call those mushrooms? Oh, the, the truffle. Truffle. They, and it's it's like water. It's not even oil anymore. But the truffle it makes it so valuable that. So they, they make the that truffle. Is that a truffle oil? The no, truffle oil, oil, and that's what goes to America for oh. a lot of money. But the oil value is not there anymore. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. I use truffle oil in my mac and cheese. Uh-uh. But you said you went to an olive, olive farm. My, my parents live in Arizona in the winter. And I went to, they have, they grow olives out there. Which mm -hmm. just seems crazy. It's 120 degrees and dry, dry, dry. But that climate, I guess, works. And I went and they have their own homemade olive oil. And I saw it being pressed first, I don't know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth press. But... It was interesting. Yeah. I, I've been twice actually. So I might go back and visit them. Go yeah. there and bring some olive oil. But it doesn't, I can't carry it on the plane with me. But now I learned that the hard way. You get truffles from China and they don't taste the same. And in Italy, of course, they have the white truffle. Mm -hmm. And that is what's very flavorful. I don't know if we're the tail end of our summer here. Was this truffle season? The black truffles? Because I saw it at a restaurant recently. Yeah, the black truffles say don't taste that much. Mm. Mm. Mm, this, it can it can use a little muslin. With your salt, pepper, garlic. Mm -hmm. mm. That was delicious. Thank you so much for having me here for a little early lunch mm -hmm. and for a fantastic tour. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it.